What's up, guys? Good to see you all. <laughs> Gonna make sure we're streaming here. How is everybody today on this lovely Wednesday? Good to see you guys. Good to see you, Kelly and Chris and Elizabeth. Nice to meet you. I believe you are new to us. <clears throat> and Alan, good to see you as well. And Lydiana, which your name always makes me laugh because it's very similar to mine. <laughs> so what's going on, guys? Happy Wednesday. I'm going to make sure we're streaming here in the group. And as I'm doing that, uh, you guys may or may not know how I like to open these calls, but how I like to open it is what this question is of, uh, who do we have here on the line? And then what is your spiritual superpower? So what's your background? This is an opportunity for us to brag. So what's on your resume? So what are you a pro at? Who do you help? What are your spiritual superpowers? So for those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Lydia Catherine here. I'm the owner at Six Figure Spirits. And I'm also a board certified hypnotist. So a lot of you guys have asked me that. So I spent the last uh, several years running a, a pretty successful hypnosis practice that I was able to scale to 20K months. Um, no problem, Elizabeth. And guys, if you want a message, be sure to set the little bar at the bottom to everybody so everybody can see your comments if you want to share them. But all good in the hood if you're just going to be on uh, sort of a fly on the wall here today. Uh, let me make sure it looks like we're streaming. Uh, all right, perfect. So how are you guys all doing today? So we got Kelly here, psychic medium, empowerment coach, quantum healer, certified hypnotist. Love it. Let's uh, see what else we got here as far as spiritual. Um, spiritual powers. And if you can't be present, just go ahead and type in the chat as well. So you're getting ready for an event. All good. We'll just let people kind of trickle in here and get started. So guys, um, if you're new to Six Figure Spirit, this is the group for hypnotists and holistic practitioners who are ready to make money. <laughs> Pretty simply put, ready to make money. Because, uh, you know, a lot of us are overgivers. A lot of us are, are, are healers because we tend to overgive. And that's how we kind of fell into what we do. Uh, Chris is a tarot reader, fly on the wall. Cool. All good. So lots of flies here. <laughs> lots of flies on the wall. But as I'm going through here, guys, don't forget to drop your questions here as I go through the topic today, which is how to really create a profitable, now a profitable pitch. So a lot of you are here, you know, what I'm going to guess is you don't even have a pitch. <laughs> so I don't know anybody who has ever taught or anybody who teaches hypnotists or healers that you even need a pitch. <laughs> like there, there's a strategy for this. And uh, even for the first several years of my hypnosis business, uh, I didn't really have a pitch. I sort of winged it. So how many of you are, are kind of just winging it right now? Like you, maybe you've managed to sell a few packages or program their sessions and uh they're kind of just winging everything right now so elizabeth says retired teacher heart-centered therapist um, elizabeth be sure to set your message uh, messenger to everyone instead of just to me so everybody can see what you're typing as well but she says retired teacher heart-centered hypnotherapist integral breath therapist yeah we quite a few of those here uh, Reiki master, workshop facilitator, and retreat center owner. Wow, that's that's a lot. That's a lot going on there. Um, yeah, so for those of you who are new to this group, we've got a ton of Reiki practitioners, uh, quite a few tarot card readers, a lot of mediums, EFT practitioners, uh, meditation coaches, hypnotists. I mean, I don't, I don't know what we haven't covered here, <laughs> unless there's something brand new to the market. That is brand new that I don't know about, which I'm sure there is. We've got sound healers. I mean, you name it. So, um, and if you're typing from the Facebook group, guys, just a heads up and actually let me grab the link here. I'm going to drop it below. So join the live stream. So if you're watching from the Facebook group, all good. I just won't be able to see your comments. So if you do want to uh, ask questions, be sure to come through the Zoom link, which I just posted below inside of the Facebook group. So what are we here to do here? 
So these, you know, typically by the time um, hypnotists and healers find my group, they've typically done a lot of other programs. They're kind of getting their feet wet in terms of marketing, but they're not usually making a lot of money. In fact, most uh, healers and holistic practitioners I speak with are kind of stuck below the 2K per month mark. That's kind of the average of what I see more often than not, even below the 1K per month mark. Okay. And this kind of goes back to what I was talking about that, um, you know, a lot of us are really heart centered. A lot of us really do want to help, but almost to the point where we are sacrificing ourselves, we're not taking care of ourselves. We're not really covering our own bills. Right. And for whatever reason, we don't feel good about that. Well, we're here to break all those habits and I'm here to teach you all that you all deserve it. Um, I'm not sure how you guys feel, but I personally feel that us as healers and hypnotists, whatever, whatever your modality, um, we've all had to make a, make a huge sacrifice in terms, I mean, in to, in, to get the knowledge that we have here today. How many of you guys that resonates with you drop me below if this is resonating with you, like you've, you've had to pay for pay for the knowledge that you have with your healing modality or any of the wisdom, even just the wisdom you have. How many of you feel that way? Like you had to make some ultimate sacrifice. I know for me, I have hurt my back permanently. I have permanent back damage. Um, I have permanent gut damage. Like there's stuff I can't go back and undo, <laughs> you know? So maybe some of you, your crutch has been smoking or drinking, or, um, you know, maybe you go to something else for it. Maybe you just, maybe you have a tendency to spend a lot of money to try and ease stress, you know? we have had to go through and test our limits, right? To get the knowledge that we have. So we deserve to be rewarded for it, I believe, because we have overcome it. So I'm not talking about entitlement here. Um, I'm really talking about like, a lot of us are already out there giving and sharing and we deserve to be compensated in a way that it's an even exchange of value, okay? So that is really my mission here and why I even, um, why I even really started my business because none of this made sense to me why we are struggling financially, okay? So this group is all about showing hypnotists and healers specifically how to package, how to price, how to get yourselves out there, build your audience, and at the end, uh, build 10, 20K plus months, okay? So what are we talking about today? We're talking about your pitch. So again, a lot of you I've spoken with don't even really know you even need a pitch, right? Let alone a profitable one. In fact, uh, for a lot of hypnotists and healers that I speak with, the pitch is more of something along the lines of, let me just list the benefits. Let me just tell you all about how great Reiki is or how great hypnosis is. How many of you guys are doing this right now? Like you're um, drop the word, uh, pitch below. If your pitch right now is like, I'm just going to tell you all about how great and how beneficial, <laughs> you know, and I'm laughing because I used to do this too. And then you wonder why people walk away, right? We wonder why people walk away. Uh, so Elizabeth says pitch okay. anyone else doing this right now? Like you don't really well, let's go through. Let's go through what this looks like. So, how do you know that your print, your pitch is not really up to snuff? Like, what, how do we know? So, these are things to look for. Uh, if you are, if your pitch is not as tight and as fine tuned as it could be, okay. Kelly says, kinda, okay. So, I teach the uh, how to create, make your pitch in a very, um, in a, a very specific way. Chances are you haven't seen it before. So. Let's get into it. So here's what ends up happening. The, the, the way to know if you're running to issues with your pitch are a few things, okay? The first one's gonna be that your, here's, here's the obvious one, is that your clients and prospects don't see the value. You don't feel like your clients really see the, tr the value. And when I say see the value, I mean, see the true value. I mean, see the value that you see in what's, what's, uh, what the potential is for them. So drop the word value below. If you feel this way right now, like you feel like why, why aren't my clients stepping up? Why aren't they taking advantage of this? Why aren't they investing more? Why aren't they open to more? right? You don't feel like they see the value 
in what you do. And again, the value and the potential that you see in it. So drop the word value below if this is you. Okay, this was a very frustrating uh, thing for me for years because when I discovered hypnosis and I saw how rapidly things changed, how quickly I could, I could shed like just like all of these emotions and memories that had been following me around, I wanted everybody to see the same. But what ends up happening is your prospects, because they, a lot of them haven't even done it yet, it's hard for them to see the same you do. So how do we get them to see the value? Okay. So if you feel like your clients aren't see the, seeing the value, the true value, the actual value, chances are it's your pitch. Okay. The next thing is if you feel like you are stuck selling, uh, let me get someone in here. You are stuck selling your time and your energy or perception. How many of you feel like you're kind of limited right now to what you can sell? Because you're only selling your time. You're only selling um, really your energy at this point. Like you have to show up for every dollar that you make. Uh, drop, the word, um, drop the word time below if this is something you feel like you're struggling with right now. Like you don't know how to sell value. You don't really only have been taught or have been selling your time or procession up till now. So how many of you guys are still selling per session here? Uh, drop the word time below if you're still selling per session here. And maybe you'd like to get into selling like a package or a program, you know? How many of you here are still selling uh, per session or you're still selling your time or still selling your energy? So when you start charging for the value of what you do, it's no longer gonna be you have to show up for every dollar, okay? And I don't know if you were like me, but, uh, you know, I hit a wall in my business. And if you haven't hit it yet, um, you will, if you're selling your time, because you're not going to be able to scale unless you bring someone else on, right? Or you're able to increase your prices. But now there's another problem is how can you increase your prices if your neighbor next door here, if this hypnotist or other Reiki practitioner is also competing with you? Right. So how can you raise your prices if people are going to walk away because the market has determined the price point? OK, so then that creates other problems. So is there anyone else here who also wants to get into charging for their value instead of their time? So uh, drop the word. Um, um, drop the word high ticket if you want to learn how to actually charge for the value of what you do instead of your time. Uh, so Lydiana says high ticket. <clears throat> Chris is high ticket. Yep. So a lot of you are readers, maybe psychics, mediums, and you're selling like individual readings, individual sessions. Believe it or not, believe it or not, we can turn this into a high ticket program. Okay. There's a way to do this. In fact, there's a way to actually lump all of your modalities into one offer, into one program, one offer, one ideal client. No more selling packages of readings here, packages of sessions of Reiki here, packages of like, because we're no longer selling the modality anymore. Okay. So Chris is high ticket. Elizabeth says high ticket. All right. Okay. The next thing here is that how many of you have ever dealt with this? Like you feel like your call is going great. And again, this is a strategy call, discovery call, and Roma call. You feel like your call is going great and you, you feel like you got the sale. And then all of a the sudden, they start to back away because of your price. So all of a sudden, fear sets in because they weren't expecting it to be that much. How many of you have ever been there? This happened, this, <laughs> I'll raise my hand first. I'll drop me first. So drop the word me if this is you. So Lydiana already said me. So I'll say me too. I don't know. When I first started my hypnosis business, I don't know how many times I would be like, yep, they're in, they're excited. I could feel it. They could feel it. And then all of a sudden they're like, oh, ooh, ooh, wasn't expecting. It was like everything just came to us like a thud, <laughs> you know? So this is what happens when they don't see the value, right? This is what happens when your pitch isn't showing the value. So that your price becomes a surprise, okay? Not a good surprise, not a surprise like, oh, I thought it was actually gonna be more. 
it's the surprise of, oh, I didn't think it was gonna be that much, right? So Elizabeth says me, yep, yep. Be very frustrating, especially when you've just given up a half hour of your time or an hour of your time or 90 minutes of your time only for to find out that they don't see the value. Like it's, it could be very, very self-defeating. And then what ends up happening is you go into this vicious cycle of self-doubt, the vicious cycle of self-doubt, which is, are people really going to buy this? Should, should I lower my prices? Um, you know, why don't people see the value? Am I worth it? Right. You start to go into this vicious cycle, but again, I'm here to tell you, there's nothing wrong with you. In fact, you're probably your program and your strategy is probably on point. Okay. It's going to be your call itself, your, your, the strategy call itself. Okay. So Lydiana, you said this just happened to you. Uh, what happened? Do you want to share a little bit? If you want to type into the chat here, like what, um, what do you feel like went wrong? Do you feel like is your price? If you want to share, just to kind of get a conversation going, the price. What's your price, Lydia? Do you know what's your investment you're asking for? 1800 Yeah, I mean, that's not, it's not a lot. Most people have that somewhere. So um, what was the objection? Do you remember what they said? Oh, 1800 for 90 days is not, yeah, it's not a lot. Oh, she didn't say. Hmm. So this is typically because we haven't tied our solution to their value. This is typically what had, yeah, so she canceled. Yeah, careful with follow-ups. I don't even really follow up anymore. It really depends on the situation. Um, <clears throat> in fact, that's what I teach my clients is to be a bit more pickier when it comes to follow-ups. So, um, yeah, yeah, we, we want to we wanna avoid these situations where people get scared and then they back out out of fear and then you got to follow up. You're left in the dark. How many... How many of you have dealt with that or you're dealing with that right now? Like drop the word, um, drop the words gray below, drop the word gray as in gray area. So you've been, maybe this has happened to you in the past where prospects get off a call and now you're stuck in this gray area. You've been told you're going to follow up and you don't know if they're going to cancel, they're going to be there, but something's telling you in your gut, like they're gone. <laughs> your gut's like, it's over, it's gone, but you're still your conscious, your conscious critical thinking mind is like, well, what if they do? What if, what if they do call? Maybe I should wait, right? Like you're just stuck in this gray area and it's not productive for either of you. It's not productive for either of you. And I'll be honest with you guys. What I teach my clients is that is not to sit in this gray area. In fact, this, this is a conversation I teach my clients so that they don't deal with this anymore. Because this gray area doesn't serve your clients, your prospects, and it doesn't serve you. So we got to get an answer. So there is a strategy to kind of deal with this too. But it sounds like, again, the value, just you, you weren't able to really tie the value uh, to uh, what you really needed. So, all right. Thanks for sharing, Leah. And then guys, as I'm going through here, um, feel free to drop questions as well. This is an opportunity for you to coaching. Uh, coaching with no no costs, right? So um, drop questions as I'm going through here, if you'd like. Okay. So for an, so obviously you know prospects don't they kind of back away, right? So if you're if you're dealing with people backing away or leaving in fear, which we just talked about, if you're another way to see how this is showing up is if you're stuck below the five k per month mark. Um, how many of you here like? Drop the word 5K if you're stuck below 5K per month and you want to get to 10K, 20K, 30K, you know, sky's the limit, right? So if you're stuck below the 5K mark, again, that's usually where healers are when they, when they find me. They're kind of stuck. That's where I was before I figured all this stuff out. <laughs> so I was kind of stuck below inconsistent 5K months. You know, it was like 2K here. 1K here, 3K here, maybe maybe 6K here, back down to 3K here. It was just, it was just all over the place. So there's usually a few reasons why this happens. 
But one of the big ones is that, again, clients don't and prospects don't see the value. So you don't really have any predictable system to close people. Because again, we're going back to winging it. Okay. Um, and again, if you're watching from the Facebook group, coming through the Zoom link, if you do want to interact. Okay. All right. So you're stuck below the 5K mark. Uh, again, no consistency, no predictability in terms of your closing. You don't know how many you're going to close. And therefore, you know, it's kind of inconsistent pretty much. Okay. And then the last point here is um, right now, if you're in the place where you are hoping people close, you're hoping people close versus knowing that you have a close. This is a different level of confidence, guys. So here's, here's, my, here's an example of this. When you get really good at pitching, it will get to the point where either as soon as you get on a call, you already know you have it before you even say anything, or even halfway through the call, you know you have it. But if you feel like you're hoping through the whole call, uh, drop the word hope below if right now you're just kind of, your strategy's hope. You're just hoping people close right now. Maybe, maybe you don't have really a strategy, or maybe you have a script, but reading from the script is not really doing anything either. So hope, yeah, Lydia says hope. Yeah, hope, hope is not a strategy. And believe it or not, um, you want a strategy. And what, and what I recommend is you're going to want to have a strategy for every single part of your business. Everything from how your clients find you, everything from how to get clients or prospects on a call, um, a strategy for the call itself, a strategy for your pitch, a strategy for enrolling new clients a strategy for uh, obviously a marketing strategy. That's an obvious one, but everything should have a, your Facebook ads. How many of you have ever run ads with nothing in return? Uh, I'll drop the word ads below and I'll start. <laughs> so I'll tell you guys right now, before I did this right, I took out $20,000 from my 401k, rolled the dice with Facebook ads, got nothing back. Okay. Now I get a nine X return on my ads. Okay. Because I just, I just hoped I just winged it and I hoped. <laughs> and when you wing it and hope you will throw money down a rat hole. Now believe now, um, there is a strategy for this. There is a strategy for ads too. Okay. So we want to run ads. If you are running ads, run ads like the professionals. Okay. All right. So let's talk about these three things here, guys. You guys ready to go? Ready to talk about how to make your pitch more profitable? And let me get Wanda in here. And drop the uh, number three below if you guys are ready to talk about these three things. And I'm gonna get a drink of water. You guys like these things? Have you guys ever had these? The look is that LaCroix? Is that how you say this? These are these are amazing. They get addicting. Um, so good to see you, Wanda. Welcome. And again, if you're in the Facebook group, um, feel free to comment below. I just won't be able to see your comments until I get to the group. And if you're watching the replay, feel free to comment as well um, on the replay as well. So cool. Let's jump into these three things. I'm going to kill my space heater. All right. So a lot of you have a pitch and it's just a weak pitch, right? Maybe some of you, you're pitching your benefits, you're pitching just sort of a generic rundown of, you know, hypnosis, things like that. We want to stop doing that. Okay. So here's what you got to do. If you don't have a pitch, let's get a pitch. If you have a pitch, let's make it better. So the first thing here is that you're going to want to tie, you're going to want to connect what you do and your solution to what your prospects' actual problems are, okay? This is usually the first problem. A lot of you, when you're getting on calls or strategy calls, discovery calls, you're kind of giving prospects just a generic rundown of, again, hypnosis, of Reiki, of what you can do for them, okay? If you don't tie it, if you don't connect how you can help them to what they actually need, their problems and their challenges, 
you're not going to get a sale. So you're going to lose that by default. Okay. So this is the first one. Questions about that, guys. Questions about that. Okay. So make sure you connect your solution to each one of their problems. Okay. So instead of giving them a generic rundown, right? <clears throat> And feel free to drop questions here as we go through here, guys. All right. Number two, let's go into number two here. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that your pitch is clear, concise. And here's a big one. Here's one a lot of you do. <laughs> and get rid of all the sciencey language. Get rid of all the neuroscience. Get rid of words like, you know, neurotransmitters and triggers and um, subconscious. <laughs> People, they're not going to understand this. So you have to talk to them as if they know nothing about what you do. Nothing about Reiki, nothing about tarot cards, nothing about um, hypnosis, nothing about any of your modality. So how many of you feel like right now, maybe you're being a little bit too sciencey. That's what I call it. A little bit too sciencey when you're describing to them how you can help them. Uh, drop the word science below if this is something that you're going to need to change with your pitch. So it needs to be clear, concise, and I would keep it short. Okay. And remove anything that might confuse them. Okay, any sciencey language, any hypnosis lingo, any healing um, uh, healing provider lingo, get rid of it all. Okay. Questions, drop those below if you guys have any. And then I'll, I'll also take questions at the end as well. Okay. All right. You guys ready for the last one here? Last one. Uh, drop the word ready below if you guys are ready for this last one here. This is gonna be an important one as well. Cool. So Elizabeth is ready. Is this, is this, is this helpful for you guys? Does this make sense? Is this resonating for you guys? Let me know. Resonate for you guys. Cool. Elizabeth says yes. Wanda says yes. Cool. Just want to make sure I'm talking to uh, saying the right things to the right people, right? All right. Number three here. Your pitch, or your I should say your solution, right? Your product or program must make emotional and logical sense for your prospect. Okay. Must make emotional and logical sense. Okay. And I'm also, I'm gonna add one more here. It just came up. So questions about that guy. So let's do a recap here. So number one, you need to be able to connect what you do to their actual problems, not list a bunch of benefits. They will never sign. Or if they do, uh, they're gonna be a low ticket client. Okay. Number two, you got to make it clear, concise, and remove anything that is going to confuse them. So any sciencey language, describe talking about the brain, <laughs> get rid of all that, talking about the subconscious, things like that. Get rid of it all. You don't need it. Okay. And number three here, it must make emotional and logical sense for your prospects. Okay. <clears throat> All right, and this last one here, um, I'm going to add a number four here because uh, this one just resonated for me when I was when I was talking about this. At the end of your pitch, you only pitch one price point, one offer. How many of you are pitching like multiple things right now? You're like, well, if you want to do this, you can do this. And if you want to do this, we can do this. And if you want to do this, we can do this. <laughs> like maybe you have different packages, different prices. And what ends up happening is they always take the cheapest offer. They always take the cheapest offer. Why? 
we can't really blame them. The subconscious always takes the path of least resistance. You guys know that as healers, right? So if you give them a smaller offer, they're going to take it, okay? So the way I teach sales is that we're no longer stepping down here. You know, if they're, if they're scared, if they're un unwilling to commit, it's not about us, well, let me give you a discount or, you know, well, I'll break it into small, like smaller packages, right? Or well, you know, let's talk later down the road, okay? It's like, how, what do they need to step up, okay? And if you have the right conversation and if you have the right positioning on your call, you won't need to be breaking down and giving discounts and doing any of that stuff. Because do you want, what's going to happen once you give them a discount, guys? What's going to happen once you give them a discount? In fact, what have you guys noticed with the clients that give you discounts or that you give discounts from the ones you don't? What, have, what do you guys notice? I know I just had this conversation earlier. What have you guys noticed when you give the cheaper clients versus the more premium clients? Yeah, dedication, 100%. Yep. Don't show up. Yeah, they, they reschedule, ghost. Don't use all the sessions, right? It doesn't feel good for us either just to collect money, right? <clears throat> yeah. They tend to be more demanding, right? Lower investment clients tend to be more demanding. They demand more of you, more of your time, right? More of your energy, right? They tend to just be, they tend to just be more of a pain in the ass overall. <laughs> so, and then number four here, I'm sorry, number three, must make emotional and logical sense to your client, your pitch, okay? Okay. And then number four, again, one offer, that's it. It's about them stepping up into that offer instead of, instead of hoping, wishing, waiting, um, convincing them, anything like that, no, okay? Not about discounting, dropping your price, giving them, giving them a special deal, no more special deals to even people you know, even people you know. A lot of you guys, a lot of you hypnotists and healers, I've noticed you circumvent your processes for people you know, friends of friends, friends, your friends, even family. How many of you guys actually notice you circumvent your processes for people just because you have a, uh, a relationship with them? Or maybe you give them a discount because you know them. This is a tough one, right? Because with family, there's almost like these built-in expectations or with a friend, there's these built-in expectations that you're going to give them a special deal. But what happens when you do that? What happens when you, I almost demand more from those people. I demand more from friends and family. I would never give family a discount anyway, because uh, I want people to feel good about investing. in. Them. I want people to get in the habit of feeling good about investing in themselves. I want people to feel good about that. Uh, Wanda says, what I find extra challenging is telling them too much while at the same time not saying anything clear enough. Yep. <clears throat> yep. How can I improve my pitch? I know I can provide them so many options to work on, but I'm not sure how to translate it into one offer. Um, Wanda, it sounds like you have a, maybe a few different niches. What's your niche? Who's your niche right now? Like, who's your ideal client? Or do you have like a, a few different niches? Because what I'm hearing is, so here's, guys, here's, here's the biggest mistake healers make. And while you're answering that, Wanda, I'm going to say this. Guys, this is going to hit home for a lot of you, okay? You try to adjust yourself for the market. And a better way of putting that is you, you compromise yourself and your values and your business to, from a place of like, um, it's not coming from a, it's coming from like oftentimes a place of desperation, from a place of neediness. And what ends up happening is out of fear, we try to, we want, we try to sell to everybody. We try, our niche becomes anybody who will pay us. 
Does this resonate for some of you guys? Your niche is anybody that will pay you. And when this happens, not only are you going to struggle to make money, you're going to struggle to get the respect that you're looking for as an expert in your niche. So Wanda, who is your niche? Yeah, see? So guys, look, breathing therapy, hypnotherapy, these are not niches. I know I'm going to blow some of you guys away right now. Hypnotherapy is not a niche. Reiki is not a niche. Tarot cards are not a a niche. Meditation is not a niche. These are not niches. I don't really know where this came. I don't know. It's like hypnotists and healers just made this up. None of these are niches. And you're never going to make premium selling hypnosis. Why? Because now you can be categorized. As soon as people are like, oh, you're a hypnotist? Well, I can put you in a category. I've paid this much before, so I'm expecting. Now you have an extra battle to deal with. Now you have another battle to deal with. Okay, so we want you to be in your own category. An expert in one thing versus a generalist among a bunch of things. Okay, here's a great example. Here's a great example. Imagine for you guys, that I just, I just, all of a sudden I started teaching you guys how to lose weight. What's going to happen? How my value, right. Is going to cut right in half right there. Right now. I'm no longer the expert. Can you guys see what I mean now? Let me know if that resonated for you guys. Suddenly I started teaching and Hey, look, (laughs) the three things I did to lose five pounds, right? Now my value gets cut in half. Okay. This is how important it is to specialize. Okay. But you're not going to specialize in hypnotherapy or group therapy or breathing techniques. You're going to specialize in a pain point. Okay. Other questions, guys. So when you, when you, when you construct your business to try and meet them where they are, right? You try to attract as many people as possible, close every, as many people as possible. Your, your niche is basically anyone that will pay you. You're coming off from a chasing energy. This is a very much like a chasing, pursuing energy. And what happens when a fox pursues a rabbit or pursues a rabbit? What happens when you chase a cat? What happens guys, when you chase a cat, what happens when a fox pursues like a rabbit? They run, they run like hell, <laughs> right? Uh, Julia says, mine is early birth womb pre-life. So here's what's going to happen, Julia. If your niche is early birth womb, prenatal, something along those lines, you suddenly add smoking, your value gets cut in half immediately. Do you guys see what I mean by that? Is that making sense? Hey, Joseph, good to see you, fellow cat, cat meowster. <laughs> yep. So going forward, guys, if you want to make money, like real good money, not minimum, not less than 5K a month, your niche cannot be your modality. Your niche would need to be a pain point. But even inside of that, you're going to need to target a person with that pain point. Okay. All right. Elizabeth says, it's hard for me to niche. I want to heal the world. (laughs) Talk about broad. That is very broad. Um, Again, coming from a good place, but imagine like, um, let's, let's give a good example here. Think of something you, okay, let's, let's use the doctor analogy here. Would you pay a, if you had to go get back surgery, would you pay a a general physician for that? Would you pay a foot doctor for back surgery? Or would you pay a spinal specialist? Right? Nobody's going to invest a lot of money into me for weight loss. I mean, they might because I talk about it. I'm pretty confident. 
but I'm going to have a higher, I'm going to have a bigger battle because that's not who I project. Uh, Lydiana says, I'm a holistic health practitioner, type 2 diabetes and wellness. Will this apply to me? Absolutely. Um, so that is a niche. Um, you'll want to make sure that this is super specific though, because do you want to attract everybody who has type 2 diabetes? Probably not. Because <laughs> some of them might not have jobs. Some of them might be teenagers. Some of them might not be coachable. Some of them might be living off food stamps or welfare. So do you want everybody with type 2 diabetes to come running? Um, do you want to attract those people who are still okay eating donuts every day and could go either way with a poor diet, right? Or do you want that one person who's searching around online desperately for the answer? You see what I mean? That's why I want to make sure your, your mission statement or your, your messaging is really tied to that one person, a whole well-rounded person. No, guys. Nope. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> he, childhood trauma is not a niche. I even think out, I sent out an email of this a long time ago. I have this one I've heard childhood trauma is not a niche. Nope. Healing childhood trauma is the how. That's how you're going to help them with the pain point. Right. So I know I'm not giving you the answers you want to hear, <laughs> but it's only coming from a place of wanting to see you succeed. So that is not going to be a niche. Niche is like, you know, again, the pain point, but then we want the person inside of the pain point, right? Um, Elizabeth says, can you give an example of a pitch? I could, um, I mean, it's gonna be a bit long. Um, you know what, here's what I'll do for you guys. I don't typically do this because I only give this to paying clients. Would you all like a framework? to um, tie what you do to your clients' uh, problems. Would you all like a framework for that? So if I was to keep run through through a whole pitch, it's gonna take another probably 20 minutes or so. So I don't know if we have time for that, but would you guys like a framework so that you could tie your solution to your prospects' pain points? Would you guys like that? Chris says yes. Chris, you have this. Ramona says yes. Elizabeth says yes. <laughs> um, trying to support. Thanks, Chris. Um, okay, I'm gonna give it me today. So um, comment the word. Um, let's put the word pitch below, and then for those of you who comment pitch either here or on the Facebook Live, um, I will have that framework ready for you guys. And I'll get that out to you this week. So I'll make an announcement. And also if you guys uh, put the word pitch below here, I'll print out this, um, I'll download this messenger, com this conversation. And if you're watching from the group, drop the word pitch below. And uh, this is something I paid a lot of money to learn, but I, I wanna see you guys succeed too. So what I'll give you is a framework which is a one sentence framework to tie what you do to your prospects problems. And this is, how, this is kind of the math equation so that they see the value. So, all right, so I'll make it, let me save this here. All right, save chat. All right, I got the chat. And if you're watching from the group, drop the word pitch. Um, did, I, did I miss any questions here? Let me scroll back up. And you guys, any other questions here? Just go ahead and drop them below. Um, uh, Zoom user, I'm not sure who Zoom your user is, but helping midlife women, professionals, and entrepreneurs heal the cause of underlying beliefs and behaviors that cause them to be run by fears. And, um, this is better. Um, Zoom user, this is better. However, I'm going to tell you right now, people are not going to run for this. They're not going to run for this because it's not sexy. It's not sexy enough, guys. This has got to be sexy, what you say to your audience. So I think helping midlife women, professionals, entrepreneurs, 
honestly, I think that's still too broad. I would, uh, there goes my kitty cat. I would pick one of those. Heal the cause. Yeah, I mean, heal the cause of underlying beliefs and behaviors. Is that exciting to you guys? That wouldn't really excite me. That, that kind of leaves me feeling like there's going to be work. So I would change that around and really focus on the anxieties and stress. Okay. So they can be productive, powerful, and prosperous. Again, that's still a bit broad. I know you guys are going to shoot me because <laughs> I'm saying all this. I know, I know you guys are banging your heads against the wall about your niche. This is still too broad. Pro well, productive in what? Powerful in what way? And prosperous, what does that mean? Okay. All right. Cool. Uh, all right, guys. I am going to go rest my voice here. But any other questions, or if you're watching the replay, drop any other questions below. And again, if you want my framework here that I've used to connect my um, prospects' uh, problems to my solution, then I'll get that ready for you guys and send out this week. So good stuff. Uh, good to see you. And oh, I think my kitty cat's here. You guys, say hi to Barb's. She weighs like a million pounds now. <laughs> so say say goodbye to BB. <laughs> she clearly is just like get the hell off your computer it's time to play but uh yep um see you later to the other fellow measters out there and i'll be in touch with you guys later this week so good to see you guys thanks for being here with me you could be anywhere else so i appreciate you spending your time here hope you got some value from this if you did drop the word value below it helps me out lets me know that you are getting some value and uh, i'll be setting out that framework here later this week all right, guys, good to see you. Have a great rest of your night. Bye-bye.